Good evening to all of you and welcome to the Independence Junior and Senior High School performance of the Living Last Supper. Cast members are from the First United Methodist Church and it is a privilege and an honor to be here with all of you. But before we begin, I want to lift up a few announcements. For starters, please turn off all your cell phones. This is much appreciated. On top of that, photos can be taken after the performance. Please know photos during the performance itself. And additionally, we will have a free will offering. Baskets are in the back of the auditorium. And money collected will go to the Women at the Well United Methodist Church, a ministry of the Iowa Correctional Institution for Women in Mitchellville. And if you would like, money be left, may be left in the baskets as you leave tonight. Thank you. Now the setting this evening is the upper room as portrayed by Mark's Gospel. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. And the teacher asked, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Now tonight, you will meet the 12 that walked with Jesus and his chosen disciples you will hear from each of them, discover what discipleship meant to them, learn how many of them were chosen, relive the tragic betrayal of one. Their testimony dates back centuries, but their example of serving Christ lives today. Not just for church leaders and missionaries, but for you. The faith of Peter, the love of John, the belief of Thomas, all of these must live in your own heart. For discipleship is not something that was practiced only by a dozen men when Christ lived on earth. It can be practiced by each of us now, today, on this same earth. There is an air of expectancy over this gathering. All the disciples can sense something is about to happen. Around the year 1495, Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned to paint the walls of Santa Maria del Brasi in Milan, Italy. There he created one of the most famous religious paintings of all time, The Last Supper, set to depict the moment immediately following Christ's dramatic announcement to his disciples that one of you will betray me. Some have said that pictures can speak a thousand words. What might we hear? if we choose to listen. I'm a 
Daniel. I've always been, I've been on the stubborn side, but I was always honest and trustworthy. Everyone knew they could come to me and I'd tell them the truth and not hold anything back. One day Philip came to me and said, we have found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. I couldn't believe my ears. I said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He just said, come and see. So we went. We were met by Jesus and he said, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. I said, how do you know me? He said, before Philip led you here, I saw you in the garden, standing under a fig tree. Well, I didn't know what to say. See, something like that, that symbolized a uh, spiritual character who was ruled by God's law. So I had no choice, and I followed him. I followed him for years. I witnessed many miracles and many teachings. One day I was on a boat with a small group of disciples who had fished until dawn without success. And that morning we saw Jesus on the beach. He said, try the right side. I said, the right side? We were just on the right side. The try we did, and our nets nearly burst our catch. It was a good lesson to remember. For many times after, as we cast our nets as fishers of men, we are reminded of that day. When our discouragement got the better of us, it often be one more cast that brought success. James, brother of John. We were two of the very first disciples that were called. We've been called the sons of thunder. Our father was said at Eden. One day we're out fishing, and Jesus comes to us and says, follow me. For some reason we did. Not sure what drew us to Jesus that day, but we, we willingly said yes. Following Jesus completely changed our life. Every day was something new. Every day was an adventure. Every day with Jesus was a lesson about life. One time we're in a village in, uh, in Samaria. And some people aren't being real kind to Jesus. And I said, Jesus, we need to destroy these people. He said, I've not come to bring destruction. I've come to bring life and to bring it in abundance. Before that moment, we just didn't get it. I'm not sure we ever fully got it. But every day was a learning. Every day was a lesson about life with Jesus. Another time, some of us disciples were kind of bickering back and forth about who was the greatest and which hand of Jesus should we sit on up in heaven. Jesus said, that's foolish talk. Don't worry about who is the greatest. Focus on being a servant. And a servant of all. Again, every day with Jesus was a lifelong lesson. We kept learning something new. Something about life, something about service. Say yes to Jesus. Every day will be new. And every day will be good. I am Andrew, one of the first two disciples of Jesus, brother of Simon Peter, the great leader, the man of intelligence, the man who changed millions of lives with his fiery tongue. I am very proud of my brother. But I'm, I'm the opposite of my brother. I'm very shy, usually quiet. And I, I can't even read or write. But I can tell you things. That's what I would do. I would sit with people and talk to them. I could tell you things that you've never read in the Bible. Things you've never heard. There was the, the time when Jesus first approached me. I was, I was fishing, fending for my family. 
I was busy. And he came up to me and said, come with me and help bring the goodness to this world and help build my church. And I said, get lost. I'm busy. And of course, Jesus had patience and, and repeated himself and said again, come with me. And this time I told him what I really thought about people who followed religion. I said, people who are religious are people who are people who are poor, people who are sick, people who need others, people that are weak. And Jesus ex exploded. Only the strong will be able to build my church. How can I build a church with the weak? Only the strong will have the courage to stand up with me. Only the strong will have the guts to bring people to me. Only the strong, Andrew. So that's what I did. I brought people to Jesus. Not like my brother, who brought hundreds and thousands with his rousing speeches, but one at a time. I would bring one person to Jesus, and that person would bring another, and that person would bring another, and so on. But what I found is that only the strong would have the courage to bring people to Jesus. Only the strong. The other time, the other time I got to see Jesus at his happiest, and it was at the feeding of the multitude. When the boy with a few fish and a few loaves changed the lives of so many. What you don't hear is when I denied him and said he couldn't go. But here was the boy that was determined and he kept pestering me. And so I brought him and I saw Jesus the happiest I'd ever seen. Because here was a boy that believed. A strong-willed example. Of course, Jesus performed a miracle that day for for all the time, but I think that the, the message wasn't that Jesus can perform a miracle, but that simple acts of kindness can change the lives of so many. Only the strongest and kindest people can change this world. Only the strong will have the courage to bring the goodness of God to others. Only the strong.
I am Peter. Called the rock by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish you could have been with us and seen the things that we were able to see in our time with Jesus. As we traveled, we watched Jesus turn water into wine. We saw him restore sight to blind eyes, hearing to deaf ears. And we even saw him bring the dead back to life. It was an amazing time. <clears throat> you may know me as Peter the Bold, for sometimes the words come out faster than I think. One night in a setting much like this, Jesus asked us, who do they say I am? And some of the disciples said, they believe you are Isaiah the prophet. But it was I that realized at that moment in time that this is, this is Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Messiah. You may know me as Peter the Brave as well. For it was I, Peter, one night when my brothers and I were on the boat, we saw Jesus coming across the water towards us. And I called out, Lord, if it is you, let me come join you. And so he said, come Peter, come on to the water with me. And so I took those first few steps onto the water. And then I looked around, and the waves came, and the wind came, and my doubt took over. And I quickly sank beneath the waves. But my Lord reached down and picked me back up onto the water and back safely on the boat. So yes, Peter the Bold and Peter the Brave, it was also I. On the night before our Lord's crucifixion, as the soldiers came to take him away, it was I that jumped to his defense, cutting off the ear of the high priest's slave. But it is also I, Peter, that same evening in the garden, earlier that evening, in the garden. My brothers and I were asked to watch over Jesus as he prayed. And what did we do? We fell asleep. We fell asleep not once, but twice. And later on that evening, after he had been led away, and we had scattered all throughout the city, People came to me and said, you, you are one of them with that man, Jesus. We know it is you. You are with that group. You are Galilean. And you are with Jesus. And three times, each time I was asked, I said no. I said, I did not know the man who I had said earlier was to be our Savior. Can you imagine the shame that I felt that night? But I did not come here tonight to tell stories about myself. The reason I am here tonight is to remind you about our Lord. Do you have the same fear that I had? As I sat in prisons, as we ran away this evening, escaping the guards, do you have that fear? I say, trust in the Lord. Do you have the doubt that I had when I stepped onto the water? If so, I say, trust in the Lord. 
Are you lonely? Do you feel all alone just like I did in those prisons later on in my life? If so, I say, trust in the Lord. Do you feel like the weight of the world is on you? If so, I say, trust in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, give your life to the Lord as I did. Trust in the Lord. Judas, the only Judean among all these Galileans. And for three years I traveled with these men, and they chose me to be their treasure. Matthew, the educated tax collector would have been the obvious choice, but me. Because I recognized I had a way with money. You see, we witnessed many miracles. But another miracle? Kept these men fed and shelter every other night. And it's been written about me this notion that I was a thief. Now, I may have taken a few pence from the group's purse and put it in my own, but that was my fair share. That's for my services. That's what I deserve. <laughs> these men are really none the wiser. Well, except for Jesus. Once he rebuked me as I became angry when a woman poured expensive oils on his head. I said, why was this oil not sold and the money given to the poor? I could have sold that oil and given most of it to the poor. Then, at the same time, there's this notion of his death. The person I've been traveling with, our king, our savior, is dead. I'm his treasure. Surely I would have a great place in his new kingdom. His death. Why, just days before this very night, he entered the city and people were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! They put their cloaks and palmings before him on the road. People were so excited, they knew their king had arrived to save them from these Romans that occupied us. And then the religious leaders, they too were talking about Jesus. They were suspicious. They wanted to know more. But what did we do after we entered the city? We hid. Kept, in our place, kept our places secret. Like this very night, we're hiding like sheep waiting for slaughter. So I was going to do something about that. Take action. I was going to get Jesus in front of those leaders. He was going to answer who he was. And not just us and a few followers who know who he is. The whole land. So yes, I made a deal with him. I identify Jesus, you would answer those questions. So on this very night, when Jesus went to a secret place to pray. I greeted him with a kiss. Because so when he looked at me, I realized. My greed and selfishness allowed Satan in my heart. And his look was not hate. It was of love and sorrow. Not for
for himself, and for my soul. I had betrayed our Lord. What was I to do? I found a tall tree, tied a rope, made a noose. For a moment I wondered, had I only known his gift was forgiveness of sins. I could not accept that because I could not forgive myself. For 30 pieces of silver, I betrayed our Lord with a kiss. And I died by my own hands. I am John, youngest of all the disciples. When Jesus asked me to follow him, I was merely in my teens. And many times, I asked myself even, why did he even pick me to follow him? I mean, many times my youth got in the way, like when he asked Jesus to send fire from heaven to destroy a village. Not long after that, I asked to sit on the right hand of him in heaven. But even though my youth got in the way many times. I'll go as far as to say, I went the furthest out of every disciple at this table. I was the only one present at Jesus' crucifixion, and I was the only one to watch after his mother. And through the traveling with Jesus and the disciples, I learned to follow and to love. And one message I want to leave you with is, no matter your age, you can make a difference. By the strength of my own hand Just temporary kingdoms On foundations made of sand In the middle of the battle I believe I finally found I'll never know the victory Till I'm willing to lay down All my weapons of defense And earthly strategies of war so I'm laying down my arms and running helplessly to yours. I surrender all my silent hopes and dreams. Though the price to follow cost me everything. I surrender all my human soul desires if sacrifice requires that all my kingdoms fall I surrender all if the source of my ambition is the treasure I obtain if I measure my successes on a scale of earthly gain if the focus of my vision is the status I attain my accomplishments are worthless and my efforts are in vain. So I lay aside these trophies to pursue a higher crown. And should you choose somehow to use me, I'm willing to lay down. I surrender all the triumph, for it's only by your grace I relinquish all the glory. I surrender all the surrender all my silent hopes and dreams though the price to follow cost me everything I surrender 
surrender all my human soul desires if sacrifice requires that all my kingdoms fall that all my kingdoms fall that all my kingdoms fall I surrender Lazarus from the dead. All the disciples were worried about him going there, including myself. At that time, Judea was a very dangerous place to be, especially for Jesus. The other disciples begged for him not to go, but I was the one who said, let us also go, so that we may die with him. If I would have gladly died fighting next to Jesus. The second story is set in the upper room. When Jesus told us, I go to prepare a place for you. My inquisitive mind was full of questions. So I, I had to ask him, Jesus, where are you going? How will we know how to get there? Looking back, this seems like a foolish question. But all I could think about was Jesus was going somewhere, and I wanted to know where so I could go with him. I'm known as Doubting Thomas, because I was the one who asked for proof of the resurrection. I had to see with my own eyes that Jesus had come back to the dead, come back from the dead. I mean, this is just an absolute miracle. But my mind and heart were put at ease when Jesus said, Do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. I am James, son of Alphaeus, called James the Minor by some. Not a word I spoke is recorded in the Gospels, nothing but my name. Because of this, I am often referred to as the forgotten follower. For many, this would be a hard role to accept. Peter's boldness assured him of being known through the ages. The brashness of the sons of thunder made them famous for all time. But is it the credit we receive in life that is important? Though I am forgotten, Still, I was a disciple, chosen by Jesus to be at his side during his ministry on earth, appointed by him to feed his lambs after his death, admonished by him to continue to spread his message. To have been part of this is all that matters. To me, it was enough to have been just one of the twelve. I am Philip, the practical one. I was a fisherman, and Jesus came to me and said, follow me. And I did. At the gathering of the multitudes, Jesus approached me and asked, how can we feed all of these people, Philip? I didn't know. It was Andrew who brought the child with the fishes and the loaves. All I could say was 200 denarii is not enough to feed any of these people, even a little bit. And then the Greeks came to me, and they wanted to speak to Jesus. The Greeks! I did not think Jesus would want to speak to the Greeks. Again, I turned them over to Andrew. <coughs> And he took them to Jesus, and Jesus spoke with the Greeks. My practicality became a stumbling block again later. It was at this very table, in this very room, when I said to Jesus, Jesus, show us the Father that we might be satisfied. And Jesus said, Philip, you have known me all this time, and yet you still not, do not know me. Those who have seen me 
have seen the Father. And it was at that very moment that I realized that my practicality must be tempered by faith. decision. I know Jesus before he'd come to me that day. All the land was buzzing with stories and deeds. 
I was even there when he gave the Sermon on the Mount. For a time, I even considered offering up my services to Jesus. But how could Jesus use me, a publican, hated by his own people? It was when Jesus came to me all things became clear. With Christ, it doesn't matter what you are or who you are. The only thing that matters is what you might become. I, Thaddeus, <clears throat> the apostle of many names in the Bible, Thaddeus, Labaius, Jude, brother James, and Judas, not a scary. Before following Jesus, I was a farmer in Caesarea Philippi, struggling to provide for my family under the weight of Roman oppression. On this last night with Jesus, I asked our Lord a question. Lord, how is it you will manifest yourself to us, but not to the whole world? Jesus responded, If anybody loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our home with him. Jesus went on to explain that he was leaving us soon, but the Father would send the Helper, the Holy Spirit, to teach us all things and help us remember his word. I didn't understand how he answered me. The Romans and the Pharisees were still the authority, not Jesus. I believed he had come to free Israel from hypocritical religious leaders and foreign governors. What I didn't understand at the time was Jesus had a much greater plan of freedom for the world. It was only after his death, resurrection, and arrival of the Holy Spirit and me and my brothers at Pentecost that I truly understood. Jesus came to die for our sins, for mine and for yours. For all those that came before him and all those that came after him. He then defeated death and Satan by rising from the dead and ascending into heaven with the Father. In return, we need to believe, to have faith in this, to love and obey his word. And when we do, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will come into our hearts and make their home there for now and for eternity. After experiencing these truths, I now understood how he had answered. Jesus intended for me and my brothers to manifest or spread the gospel to the world. And that's what we did. For the next several decades, I left Israel to teach Gentile and Jew alike the love of Christ. And long after my earthly death, from up high in heaven, I saw down below that Jesus had converted most of those Romans to Christianity too. The wonders of God. To all, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. I am the disciple named Simon, known as some men as Simon the Sabbath. Before I was called to follow Christ, I was a member of a group determined to drive in the Romans from Judea, a group that would not hesitate to sabotage or murder to achieve this goal. We were political fanatics, a group founded on a cornerstone of hatred. Yeah. Jesus called me to serve. At first, I felt one of the reasons for being called was to keep some of the other disciples in line, such as Matthew, for he had worked for the Roman government. But eventually, I gave up these thoughts and struggles against the Romans to join in against the struggle of sin. It was a long time before I knew that Jesus did not come to establish an earthly kingdom. But as this realization 
slowly came to me, I wholeheartedly gave myself to his work. It was a gradual but complete transformation. Does such a change sound like a miracle? Yes, I believe it is a miracle. One of many witnessed by my fellow disciples and myself. And this is also a miracle that you could experience by just giving yourself over entirely to Christ and dedicating your life to the work of his kingdom. Humble yourselves in the eyes of the Lord. 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 And he will lift you up. 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 Humble yourselves in the eyes of the Lord. 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 And he will give you strength. 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 God. I am Jesus. You have heard from the disciples on their way the way of the Lord is often very different than the path that any of them were originally on. Some of them led a simple and humble life and Others led a life of very selfish greed or even brutal. To steal or take anything was nothing. It was to their gain. Some of them knew of absolutely no God whatsoever, and others worshipped even hundreds of idle earthly gods. But when I came to them, I opened their eyes. They learned as they as they walked, as they listened, and as they followed that the ways of the world would make this life that they led so much better. We put this life of confusion that they were living in behind them. It truly did open their eyes. the grace and the love of God my Father. I was born onto the earth through my mother Mary. And each of the disciples came up to me and expressed their sins. I forgave each one of them the sins that they had committed. Offer them forgiveness. Ask them to repent. Ask them, just as I have forgiven your sins, I ask that you, as you go on, please forgive all those who have sinned against you, for those who have crossed your paths. Offer forgiveness. Give your heart to those in need of it. Ask them to keep moving forward in the direction we're going. Ask them to pray daily to my Father. I said, as you have walked with me, 
and seen me do many things. To always remember that I was following in the ways of my father. I asked them to keep moving forward in that direction. To my disciples I say, this is a very, very challenging evening for me. God has asked me to keep moving on and I will move on in his way. I soon will be going a place for all of you. For all of you in this room, I assume we'll be going fair a place for you. I ask of you keep moving forward. You may not understand this right now. As I said, soon I will be leaving you. Although I am leaving you, through my Father, I will never leave your side. And just as I have told you, along our paths and the things that happen with us. Before I was here, and now, and for those of you who wish to father in my, follow in my Father's ways, you will see eternity, and God will always be there with you. I did not come to say this would be an easy, easy path to take. Oftentimes you will find in this world truly in your heart that God is with you. Following in his ways shall be a very difficult path. If you follow in my Father's ways, I promise all of you, I will see you in heaven. I did not come here to be a king of this earth. I came for my Father, and I did not come to be served. I came to serve you, and I came to serve my Father. John 13, 1 through 17. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, Not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. 
Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Take this wine through the covenant. This is my blood, which will be given up for you. It will be given up for the forgiveness of sins. I shall not drink of this until after I have seated with my Father up in heaven. Take. We now invite each of you to come forward for the sacrament of Holy Communion. As United Methodists, we have open communion. We invite everyone to come forward for the taking of the bread and the cup. We will do communion by intention. We invite you to take a piece of the bread and dip it into the cup. And the disciples will act as ushers as they will serve you. They'll be coming down. There'll be three stations, one for the far side of the auditorium, one for the center, and also right here.
continue to follow the drama through the night, Judas Iscariot comes back on the scene. Judas, 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 Judas. 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 No. He betrays Jesus with a kiss as Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas, Judas, how could you? Judas, yes. Judas. Judas. you scum of the earth. Take that. Right. Pick up this cross. Now. You're supposedly the king of the Jews. Where's your God at now? You're a worthless excuse for a human being. Let's move. You there. Help him carry that cross. But my sons are with me. Quiet, or I'll strike you down. Move. Go. Faster. By noon on Friday, after 12 hours of intensive trial and mockery, Jesus is taken to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and is crucified. 
From the cross, Jesus speaks. Father, your Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. As he bears punishment for our sins upon himself, as he feels the separation from God that should be ours, he says, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And later, knowing that all is now complete, he exclaims, Yet it is finished. The glorious transaction has taken place. All that Jesus entered into human history to achieve has been accomplished. Or has it only begun? The question remains, will his message of good news released to captives, life and light, live on? In fact, he was actually reported to have done this at the feeding of the 5,000. 
Philip will minister with Andrew for 20 years before his crucifixion in 52 AC. Thomas was known as the twin. It is widely accepted that his nickname was given to him because of his remarkable resemblance to Jesus. In fact, it is speculated that the very reason that Judas was needed for the identification of Jesus was because of the tremendous likeness between Thomas and Jesus. Thomas will evangelize India where he will endure various persecutions and there he will be martyred 30 years from this very night. There is some evidence that James was a cousin of Jesus and had been acquainted with him since birth. Jesus predicted that James would indeed drink the cup that Jesus drank. And in 44 AD, according to Acts 12, 1 and 2, James will be put to death by Herod. It was to John that Jesus entrusted the care of his mother. This John will do, living several years in the epistles. Later, John will be exiled to the island of Patmos off the coast of Turkey, where he will receive and record the revelation of Jesus Christ. John will die of natural causes, the only disciple who will not be martyred. The question still remains, will the story end here? If continuing this message of hope and love means each of us will carry a cross, then we will bear each other's burdens, we'll serve and love even those who do not deserve it. Will the story end here, or will God's love live on? As we ponder this, let us pray. Loving God, we have just participated in the story of the final hours of your son's life. Might this story live in us? Might this story move us to become a disciple in all that we do? Might this story change our life in some special way? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We now invite the disciples to come back in, and you may wish to express your appreciation to them. And you also will be able to take pictures, and amen, and blessings to all. our heart that you took the time to come out. This is a very meaningful week of Holy Week, and this day uh, leads us uh, really into Easter, too, as we do eventually find that uh, joy of Easter. So again, so so grateful you could come out tonight. Uh, thank you. We're going to pose a little bit if you'd like to take some pictures, and then we can kind of meet and greet. They're truly blessings, and a happy Easter as that day approaches.